Welcome to another solution video. This time we're going to take a look at the 2022 AP Statistics FRQ exam question number five. We're going to fully explain this problem. It's a pretty good one. It involves inference for means. So let's just dive right into it. Studies have shown that foods rich in compounds known as flavonoids have lower, help lower blood pressure. Research conducted a study to investigate whether there was a greater reduction in blood pressure for people who consumed dark chocolate, which contains flavonoids, than people who consumed white chocolate, which does not contain flavonoids. 25 healthy adults agreed to participate in the study and 3.5 ounces of chocolate to their daily diets. Of the 25 subjects, 13 were randomly assigned to the dark chocolate group and the rest were given to the white chocolate group. All participants had their blood pressure recorded in millimeters of mercury, MMHG, before adding the chocolate to their daily diets and again 30 days after adding chocolate to their daily diets. The reduction in blood pressure before minus after for each of the subjects in the two groups is shown in the dot plot below. So we had a really well-conducted experiment. We definitely have comparison because we got two groups, people taking white chocolate and people taking dark chocolate. Basically, the dark chocolate has the flavonoids and the white chocolate does not. 25 subjects were split into two groups. 13 used the dark chocolate. So I'll put a little 13 right here. 12 used the white chocolate, randomly, of course, got up a random assignment. And there was lots of controls. Everybody was told to add 3.5 ounces of the chocolate, whether it was white or dark, to their daily diets. Everybody did this for 30 days. Everybody had their blood pressure measured before and again after. So what we did here is we were looking at the before. So I'll use a capital before for B for before minus capital A for after. So obviously we want your blood pressure to go down, which means that we're looking for this number to be greater than zero. If the before was bigger than the after, that means that your blood pressure went down. And if your before minus after was a positive number, greater than zero, then that means that you definitely had a reduction in blood pressure. All right, so here is the results from the two people, or not two people, sorry, two groups. And, you know, just for example, we could see that, um, you know, there are, uh, there's a 12 right here. Now, what that meant is for that one person taking dark chocolate daily, they had a difference of 12. So their before minus after was 12, which means that their before was 12 mmHg higher. So they, they actually did reduce their blood pressure by 12 points, mmHg, whatever you want to call that. So um, makes sense. Now, don't forget what a negative would mean. For example, this person right here was a negative 12. A negative 12 means that their before minus after was negative 12, which means that their after was higher which means their blood pressure actually went up after the 30 days of taking the white chocolate for that one single person. Okay, great. Now that we understand all this represents, let's talk about what the questions were. First question says to determine and compare the medians of the reduction in blood pressure for the two groups. So determine and compare. So not only do they want us to find the medians for each group, but they want us to compare them. And that's pretty simple when you're working with quantitative data, just one is more, one is less, one is greater, one is less. Okay, so how do you find the median? Well, um, all we have to do is find the middle value. Now, there is a little bit of a trick, a little, little hint to finding medians. Um, if you take your sample size, in this case, 13 for the dark chocolate, and add one and then divide by two, this will tell you what spot the median is in. So 13 plus one is 14, 14 divided by two is seven. So the seventh dot counting from the bottom will be my median. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my median right there, which looks like that is right at seven. So for the dark chocolate, my median is seven mmHg. Don't forget units on quantitative data. So again, it, it, I mean, obviously it could be like, uh, you know, 6.9 or 7.1, but it does look to be pretty much right in between the six and the eight. So we're going to best guess there is seven. All right, what about the median for the white chocolate? So for the white chocolate, I'm going to take my sample size 12 plus 1 divided by 2. Now 12 plus 1 is 13. 13 divided by 2 is 6 and a half. So that means the median is located at the 6 and a half position, which is going to be right in between 6 and 7. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7. 
So the sixth value is negative two. The seventh value is positive two. The median falls right in between those two values. Okay, so that's actually the simplest math in the world to do. What value falls right in between negative two and positive two? Well, zero. So for the white chocolate group, the median is zero milligrams per Hg. So the median for the dark chocolate group was seven. So that means that the median value is how much they lost was seven. Remember, that's a positive seven, which means that's a reduction in blood pressure. It means your before was seven points more than your after. That means it went down. And the white chocolate group, well, their median showed that uh, there was no change, no change in blood pressure uh, before minus after stayed at zero. So now we got to compare. Obviously, when you compare, we just want to mention that, hey, the dark chocolate had a higher median or the white chocolate had a lower median. A simple statement like that allows us to compare. So here's my final answer for that one. The sample median reduction in blood pressure for those eating dark chocolate was 7 mmHg, which is greater than the sample median reduction in blood pressure for those eating white chocolate, which which was about zero mmHg. So notice there's a lot of context here. I didn't just say the median is seven, the other median is zero, right? It's the sample median reduction in blood pressure for those eating dark chocolate, extremely descriptive there, was seven millimeters uh, mmHg. And then for the white chocolate median in reduction of blood pressures, it was zero. And obviously the dark chocolate group was greater, or you could have said the white chocolate group was smaller, however you want to say it. Pretty easy question there. All right. Researchers found that the mean reduction in blood pressure for those who consume dark chocolate was 6.08. So that's a mean, not median. The mean for the dark chocolate group is 6.08, which means on average, those people lost 6.08 milligrams Hg of blood pressure. That's pretty good. And the mean reduction for the white chocolate group was 0.4. Two. So those people also lost on average, but it was not nearly as much. It's only about 0.42 mmHg. So the question says, one researcher indicated that because the difference in the sample means was 5.66, so they took the average for the dark chocolate group, they subtracted the average for the white chocolate group, and they got a average difference of 5.66 mmHg and they concluded well hey uh, 5.66 is greater than zero so there is convincing statistical evidence to conclude that the population mean blood pressure reduction for those who consume dark chocolate is greater than those who consume white chocolate why might the researchers conclusion based only on the difference in sample means of 5.66 not necessarily be true. Well, this is very elementary thinking. This is like a little kid that says, well, um, 6.08 is bigger than 0.42. Case closed. That's a, that's a positive difference. Looks like the dark chocolate worked. That's just not enough. In the world of statistics, that's not enough to make a valid conclusion that the dark chocolate is going to help reduce your blood pressure more than the white chocolate will help reduce your blood pressure. Basically, we need to look at a sampling distribution. We need to first understand what all possible differences could look like between a group taking dark chocolate and a group taking white chocolate. And then when we determine where our mean difference falls within all of those possible differences that we can only see in the sampling distribution, then we can actually start to make a conclusion about whether 5.66 is significantly high or not. So hopefully you have a, a good teach that taught you about inference procedures. And if you're going to determine if a difference is significant, you need to look at a sampling distribution. So here's my nice typed up answer. This is pretty lengthy, but this is one of those types of questions that you want to shine and really show that you know what you're talking about. So I wrote the research conclusion may not necessarily be true because just looking at the difference in sample means alone does not consider the variability in the sampling distribution of all possible differences in sample means. All they're looking at is, hey, if there was no difference, if white chocolate and dark chocolate didn't even matter, then that mean what we would expect to see a difference of zero. We saw a difference of 5.66. 5.66 is more than zero, case closed. That's not enough. We need to consider the variability that we can only see in a sampling distribution. For example, another random assignment of subjects could result in a sample mean reduction pressure for subjects assigned to dark chocolate to be smaller than the mean reduction in blood pressure for those assigned to white chocolate, right? The idea of a sampling distribution is it shows us all possible outcomes for the differences. Then we could see where 5.66 fits in. 
So we really need to further analyze how a mean difference of 5.66 compares to other such differences between two means. This can only be done by examining a sampling distribution for the mean difference of two samples. We need to assess the likelihood that an observed difference of 5.66 milligrams Hg or more extreme occurring on the assumption that there is no difference in blood pressure of the two groups. So we really need to hone in on finding the probability that the difference of dark chocolate minus the difference of white chocolate is greater than more extreme than 5.66. We need to find that probability and then that can determine if we're going to reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis of there being a difference or not. All right, now, obviously we could walk through this problem working with a two sample T test for the difference between two means, but they actually don't ask us to do that, right? All they want us to do is explain that, hey, you know, why is just looking at the 5.66 not enough? Now, here comes part C, which is actually really interesting because they're trying to get you to understand the idea of inference without you going through all of the procedures. So what they say here is a simulation was conducted where they actually investigated 120 different trials, and in every trial, they looked at the difference between the chocolate group, the dark chocolate group, and the white chocolate group. Okay, so here are actually the results for those 120 simulations. Every dot represents the mean of the means, or the, excuse me, the difference in the means in that trial. Okay, so um, for example, this dot right here, Sorry, that's kind of a big thing. Let me circle this dot right here. That would mean there was a difference a little bit below negative one, maybe negative 1.2. So that means that in that particular group, the white chocolate actually had a higher mean difference than the dark chocolate. Because again, we were looking at the mean of the dark chocolate minus the mean of the white chocolate. And a negative would mean that the white chocolate mean was higher. Okay, so how are we going to use this simu simulation to determine whether results from the 25 participants in the study actually provide convincing evidence at a 5% level of significance? Let me note that. They want us to use a 5% significance level. That adding dark chocolate to the day of the diet is greater reduction in blood pressure on average than adding white chocolate. So the problem is exactly what I just kind of got done talking about. We need to figure out where does my sample fall in? Our sample was a positive difference of 5.66 when we did the average dark chocolate minus the average white chocolate. 5.66 is right about here. So of the 120 trials, only three of them, one, two, three, three out of the 120 trials resulted in a difference more extreme than ours. That is 2.5%. So 2.5% of their simulations were like mine or more extreme. And that is, of course, our p-value. So instead of us actually, you know, walking through this, building a sampling distribution, showing all possible differences, and then finding where we fit in that, doing all the standard deviation, doing all that stuff, they're kind of helping us out here and just letting us use this graph to show this. So yes, this is only 120 trials. That's certainly not all trials, but 120 trials is a lot of trials to give us a good um, logical conclusion here. So based on the fact that so few samples, only 2.5% of possible differences were like ours or more extreme, that means that our result was a significant result. And when we do have a significant result, especially because 2.5% is less than our level of significance, less than 5%, then we are going to reject the null, that, that there is no difference, and we would go with the alternative, is that there really is a greater reduction in blood pressure on average with the dark chocolate versus the white chocolate. So here is my fully typed up conclusion for that. So I just reiterated here in sentence form, the observed value of the sample statistic was 5.66 mmHg. The graph of the 120 simulated differences shows that a difference of 5.66 or larger occurs in only three out of 120 trials. That is a p-value of 2.5%, which is definitely less than our significance level. So assuming that there is no difference, because every time you build a sampling distribution, you assume that there's no difference between your two samples and you put a zero right smack dab in the middle, then a difference of 5.66 would be considered significant because the probability of it occurring or more extreme is under that 5% significance level. So here comes my conclusion. Therefore, there is enough evidence to conclude that adding dark chocolate to the diet will result in a greater mean reduction in blood pressure than adding white chocolate to the diet. 
Now, I want to emphasize that they asked me a question and I answered it literally using the words of the problem. Will their result, will this data show a result of the greater reduction in blood pressure on average for the dark chocolate in the daily diet versus the white chocolate? Like literally copy what they said in the problem, right? I get so many kids that will just say, oh, the results are significant. It, it works. It's better. But they never describe what this pronoun it represents. So Use the words in the problem. Is there evidence that the white, that the adding dark chocolate to your diet will result in greater mean reduction in blood pressure than adding white chocolate? Yes. So say that. But one more key part is the idea of this was an experiment that did use volunteers. Yes, there was random assignment of those 25 volunteers, but because it's using volunteers, I can't make a statement that says this is true for all people or anybody in the world add dark chocolate to your diet and it's going to work. I have to make sure I add to the end of my conclusion that this is only true for people similar to those who participate in my study. If you're not similar to the people in my study, I can't guarantee this is going to work for you. That's one drawback of using experimental design is that you sometimes cannot limit your results or, or express your results or extrapolate your results if you want to all possible people. It can only be people similar to those in the study. So this problem is a, it's very much like running a um, an inference test, a significance test, but really it's just having you focus on the big ideas of a significance test and how we can simulate a sampling distribution to see where our Observed data of 5.66 or observed difference falls, and we see that it falls um, pretty high, pretty pretty unusual, which means it's significant, and that adding dark chocolate does help lower your blood pressure. All right, hopefully you understand this question. Good luck. Stay tuned for more videos over more FRQ solutions.